Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode two. So grab your knitting, crochet, paper craft, tatting, whatever, and join us while we craft and talk. Or try to. <clears throat> yes. We're both a, a little under the weather, so bear with us. Perfect time to start a podcast. Yeah. When you're sick. But that's okay. Well, okay. We'll, we'll get through it. We like challenges. Yes. Okay. So. What are, what's for, is first on the needles? Projects, um, projects of the moment. Yes. Whips, what, are you, what are you working on? Support. Um, so about that, uh, I talked about it last week. I worked on this last week. And um, I keep calling it alligator stitch because I like alligators better. They're my more favorite. But it's actually crocodile stitch. And I don't like it because it's in Tinkerbell color. So it, it looks, looks like... like Disney princess. And I'm hating it. So, But it looks so good. You could give it to me. I like it. Okay, well, I'll finish it up and send it to you because um, I'm all... It's, it's, it's close enough that I could get it done. I just hate it so much. So maybe I will send it to you. What else are you working on? I've got, I've made progress on the Jane hat, which I totally shouldn't be focusing on since I probably won't get it done for detention this month, but, yeah, um, but yeah, that's what I said. Whoa, look at you go. Yeah. You can't see the cable, but you've already seen it in the last podcast, hopefully. Yes. So, <clears throat> I made progress on that. Oh, and I also got... I actually finally cast on my owl and did that whole long, horrible, horribly long, tedious 88 rows of three stitches a piece in garter. Good lord, talk about tedium. So that's the tab beginning, and I gotta pick up the stitches along the edge, and it's kind of driving me a little nuts trying to figure out where. <laughs> Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah. And everybody's tutorials are in nice worsted weight for how to pick up stitches on the edge. And I'm like, oh, and it's in black, too. I always come up with the best ideas, so stick with me. So that's kind of waiting until I can not be frustrated with it. Or until I have really good lighting. And I might just kind of pick up stitches wherever. Cause. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's just not gonna really matter. Really difficult. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Since it's three stitches wide, it won't look that wonky if I mess it up. <clears throat> nope. Yeah, hopefully. And for me, like that part of the shawl, it usually gets like folded over, like on against my neck anyway. So right. like nobody sees that edge. Yeah. Especially like that part. That's the beginning part. Nobody mm -hmm. gonna see. Nobody gonna see it. Yeah, hopefully. And it's black, so even if I mess it up, it kind of like the light just kind of falls into it anyway. So I'm I'm not too worried about it. As long as I don't unpull a stitch or make something that falls apart, uh, then I'm good. But that's it for my whips at the moment. That's what I'm working on. Okay. Almost exclusively. Surprisingly. What are you working on? What is this? So, um, this is, I got this yarn, Barocco Lindsay. Okay. And it's, uh, hey, hold it still, hold it still, I couldn't see. You want the label? Yeah, I just want to see it. Or the yarn? No, the label, label. Oh. Well, both. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Oh, that's nice. It, yeah. Is it? Is it kind of tweed, or is that just the light? It's not really tweed. The, the plies are slightly different colors. More visual interest, hopefully. So, like, because I think of, like, a tweed as, like, a yarn with, like, lumps in it. Right. Of different colors, you know, and these have, it does have, like, the strands are slightly different. Right. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's good. Um, you can so always try really to put pretty. your hand behind it if uh, you need it to focus on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that helps. Uh, so I've had this yarn for a little while, 
and um, I've wanted to make a t-shirt out of it. I've wanted to just, like, try using linen, because I've heard that when you wash linen, it gets really soft and nice. Right. That's what everyone says. And I want to find out if it's true or not. So, uh, um, I don't think I actually think, have... I think everybody says that's true, so I would never really doubt that, but... Scientific yeah, you know, but... Uh, endeavor will help you to understand. I need to make an experiment for scientific purposes. Well, I'm not ar- really arguing with you. So, that I, this is just my experiment to see if it really works, right? And then I'm going to buy yarn. So, Give okay. me linen. I don't mind that. So, um, I'm making... The pattern is called Gemini, and it's free on Knitty. Oh, okay. it's a top-down raglan-style t-shirt. So, this is... Didn't you learn your lesson from Raglan? The top. Pop I'm following down. a pattern this time. All right. I just don't want you to, to lead yourself into heartbreak. I know. But that's why I'm following a pattern this time. Because I wasn't following a pattern the other time. And so I thought, well, maybe like if I follow a pattern that's top down Raglan, it'll make more sense. But we'll see. Anyway, so it goes like this. Da 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 da. Goes up here. Okay. And um, it has this really simple. Uh, lace pattern on the top. It's cute. I wouldn't that... really call it lace. It's kind of like a mesh. Is it drop stitches? No. Those are double yarn overs. Oh, okay. I keep doing that. Like, my face and talking to you and yarn. Focus on the yarn. There we go. Yeah. That's good. So, um, I cast that on uh, a couple weeks ago. I was hoping that I could get it done before the month is over. I don't know if that's going to happen. Well. I just didn't feel like um, proposing. Honestly, I didn't feel like proposing a phoenix. And I didn't feel like waiting to cast it on. So there yeah, you go. I don't blame you. So I, I didn't tell you about my um, mission debacle finishing. Well, not on the. Oh, yeah. So what did you decide to do? Oh, but I let, finish your sweater first. If <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt your sweater. No, that's it for that's it for that okay. that t-shirt thing. Okay. Um. So you know how they said a hat wasn't enough for the mm-hmm. mission; they couldn't approve a single hat. Mm-hmm. Um. So I I waited until I was less mad. Like I said, I should do. Yeah, good girl. Yeah. And then I propose. I did propose socks. Did they accept that? Yeah, they did because they didn't know that they were crochet socks. So I hope that they can accept knit and crochet because the hat's knit and the socks are crochet. But I couldn't find anywhere that told me they had to both be the same craft. So okay, I can always- but I'm just saying I you should tell somebody that they're crochet socks. Why? So that they could tell me no? I already got approved. Because you don't want them to go, like, at the end, like, that wasn't enough work. We didn't know they were crochet socks. I'm just saying. Oh, but, uh, what do you mean? Like, they at the end when I crafted it all? Yeah. Like, I will. So, anyway. That's probably, well, realistically, I'm probably just gonna get through the hat. Yeah. But... If I somehow magically crank through the hat, uh, and then I can work on those socks, and and then a miracle happens somewhere in there, who knows? (laughs) Anything is possible. We'll deal with the uh, problems when we come to them, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I can always make knit socks, too, some small footy socks, if I had to. Oh, yeah. There you go. Because there's those... You know, little footy socks should be simple enough that I don't have to do too much crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay, we ready for more? Yes, we okay. are. Okay, so, did I tell you anything about my owl? Not a thing, other than you proposed it, like, middle of the night, I think. Oh, yeah, <laughs> last night. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is my swatch. Let's see. For my owl. Is it cable at the top? Hold that part closer. Yeah, no, I'll hold that part closer. I oh, I have a story. I have a story oh. to tell you. So I bought this yarn, right? <clears throat> right. And I had a pattern in mind for mm-hmm. Aaron weight yarn. And I ordered DK weight yarn. 
I don't know why uh, I got uh, distracted. I think because <laughs> it's so like, pretty. It's so pretty. I uh, yeah okay. So I luckily ordered enough that I'll have enough for a sweater. So okay. I just had to like restructure what kind of pattern I was going to do. Uh huh. So before I decided what pattern I was that I was going to switch patterns, I swatched in size sixes, and then I swatched in size sevens. And after I swatched there, I did was a very good girl, and I washed my swatch. The first oh. time I've ever washed my swatch. New and exciting realms. Yeah, but because it's DK weight yarn, like, I was not getting the right gauge for the Aran weight sweater, right? I of was course. just checking. Just checking. Just but, in case. Just in case. But no. Miracles so, can happen, but not probably that big of a miracle. Probably not. Um, and so then I went on Rav, and one of the really thing, things I like about Rav is the pattern search. So I pattern searched uh, knitting, DK weight yarn, sweater, cable. Like, I put all those in so that I could good. look and just find patterns that I wanted. Right. And then um, I found a pattern called Sashiko that um, has 22 stitches per inch gauge and of course my size six needle was 20 inches per not per stitch per four inches okay so i swatched on fives Mm -hmm. i got 24 stitches in four inches so i needed 22 (laughs) not 24 excuse the coughing so then and i think it was because i was holding the yarn really tight and trying to get it smaller Mm -hmm. So then I loosened up and just, like, knit regular, and I got gauge on this, like, tiny little inch of swatch. You need to make a bigger swatch, madam. And then this is the stitch pattern. Okay. Or the part of it. It is not the complete pattern. So here is the... I'll let you get away with this time. Here's the Sasiko. Hold it there for a second, because you're kind of glitching out a little. Your video. Okay. Um, so I really like it, and it's actually going to be okay if my gauge is a little smaller. I did some math, Mm -hmm. because then the sweater would just end up having, like, an inch of negative ease, and it would be a little bit tighter, because the smallest size is a 24, and I'm a little bit smaller than that, so it would still fit. Right. Says she, and then she goes down the rabbit hole. So we'll see how that goes. And that's how you ended up with a baby sweater. Uh, That's all I have for what's on my needles, just those two things. And what's funny, Mm -hmm. the Gemini, Mm -hmm. it's the same. I need the same size needle for both these projects. Mm -hmm. Of course I do. Not good planning of the universe. Was it my fault? Okay. Mm. Got any finished objects? For FO? Uh, I do actually. What's our FO section? It's a bird. It's a plane. A it's bird. a foes. Plane. <laughs> yeah, only one though, which is better than my usual. Hey, look at that! So, um, I was really <laughs> getting tired of my tea getting cold, even with a uh, a sleeve. I don't know if you can. It has its own sleeve. Cold itself. Um, Hold and it I've still. got a lid. Hmm? Put it back in front of the camera and hold it still. Okay. Let me put the light on it. There we go. What yarn is that? It's two. Um, it's some leftover acrylic that Tracy gave me mm-hmm. from the yarn barn, mm-hmm. I think. You know, the really cheap acrylic stuff. It's mm-hmm. like rainbow crazy acrylic. And then I just paired it with some... Uh, uh, worsted wool. Mm. Um, it came out cute. Yeah, because like the yarn itself, the acrylic is um, uh, like way too crazy. The color, you know, like it, it made a like, she made a rainbow hat out of it, and it's very vibrant. Yes, and that's great if you want uh, like something super vibrant, but I. Wanted something a little more mellow, so I paired it with the white to kind of tone it down. And I like it because it kind of came out like candy. Yeah. It does look edible. 
I made it uh, with a snap. Oh, that's Pecans. cool. So I sewed a snap on, um, and it's got these little weird extra spaces here because it fits uh, almost all of my mugs. That's nice. So I sat and carefully like made sure that all my favorite mugs would fit in it. <laughs> so um, it goes. That's when planning. It, yeah, that was like probably the smartest thing I'd done in a while on my own. <laughs> so. So it fits everything, and hopefully it will keep my tea from going cold so fast. That's really cool. I'm a little bit jealous. So. Uh, I haven't turned it in for homework yet, but that's where it's going. Do you know what class? No, I haven't. I haven't even okay. figured it out yet. Yeah. Sorry for all the weird faces. I'm chewing on a cough drop so I don't cough as much. Well, if there's any extraneous noise, currently my partner is in the kitchen with her rollerblades on. Which is totally fine. She's trying out some new, new wheels, mm. and in my kitchen. So anyway, um, <laughs> your life so is now life. Cold. <laughs> Oh, you finished the hat. I did. I even I already turned something in for detention today or this yeah. month, and I was gonna like save one end, you know, for next uh -huh. month. And I wasn't paying attention, and before I knew it, all the ends were woven in. And I was like, oh, shuckaroos. Oh, well, I guess I have to turn it in. Oh, well. <laughs> so I might turn it in for, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yay, and detention, but it's not going to be for any points. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always, it, did you already turn in the other detention? Yeah, I did. Okay, I was going to say, you can post I turned it in at, like, 12.05, like, you on post... January 1st multiple projects together, but, um, oh, there you go. Yeah, it needs a pom-pom. Definitely needs a pom-pom, but. Yeah, I think you need one. Yeah. Or a tassel, maybe, if you're crazy. A tassel? So, I'm happy with that, because even if I don't, you know, I can give it away real easy. So, mm -hmm. I've never had, like, gifts ready to go before. I'm, like, not that kind of knitter, so it's kind of fun. Yeah, uh, but that's all I finished. Okay. Um, you had two hats to finish, right? Yes, Were the you... other one I haven't started yet. Okay. It's right here. I mean, I just I haven't put it back on the needles. Okay. But here's the other one. This one, I think, is a little bit looser. Oh, no, it's not. I don't know. They are different needle sizes, but one of them is <laughs> probably slightly looser than the other. But, um, yeah, so I'll finish this one, too. And... Then I'll have two hats ready to go. So that was crazy. So I'm glad I saved it, you know. Right. Well, I mean, that's a lot of work to just throw away. That's, at least well, you're yeah. making something useful out of your swatches. Okay. That's all that I have for all? FOs. Do you have any more? Um, I think that's it. Yeah, because I didn't finish this guy. I hate you. You're too foo-foo. Anyway. So next, things to hyperventilate over. What do you got? Okay, so I I just took my first opera appreciation class last night. I thought ahem, that somebody said she wasn't going to get to sing. I didn't sing. We just, just watched sang. for two hours and then I came home and sang. Mm, I feel gypped. Oh, well. Sorry. Carry on. So the, uh, it's like a, it is through the community college, but it's like extensions or something. So it's like not homework and, you okay. know, everybody there is like a senior citizen, you know, except for me. Right. And as, as is usual with most of our hobbies. Yeah. Right. So our opera last night was, um, Puccini's Turn Dot. And uh, the most famous aria from that is uh, Nason Dorma. And most people have probably heard it. Uh, right. So if, you can go to the show notes, which are at our WordPress blog, which we'll talk, I'm sure we'll give, it's sisters of the holy fiber .com. And That's I'll have a link awesome. to a YouTube video. Slower, slower. We'll talk, we'll do it slower later. Let me Aww. do it slow now. Okay. Sisters of the Holy Fiber dot WordPress what? dot com is where you will find our show summary. 
because it's got everything that we, it's got like everything that we talk about. So. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. Sounds exciting. Yeah. So uh, I'll have a link there to a uh, performance of that aria. It's really it's heartbreaking. Oh, it's heartbreaking. So, uh, so oh. that's what I'm. I was very excited about. That's what okay. I got. What you got? I got nothing to hyperventilate over. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Oh, okay. my new earrings. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, your new your earrings. Yeah, there's probably no way you're gonna be able to see these, but I can, these can, I can see them. Go no. to your right. Mm-hmm. No other way. There you go. No, towards the camera. Stop. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay. I hope we saw some of that. I don't know what's going to get cut off. We have no idea. This whole podcast is going to be an experiment. Well, it always is. In editing, probably. <laughs> it's an adventure in editing. Yeah, so- sounds uh, makes it sound a lot more exciting when you say it that way. Um, so these are my not- your earrings. I'm trying. Stop interrupting, and I will. But I'm so good at it. Uh, we both Here, I'll are. take a drink of water and stop interrupting you, and you can talk. It's fine. Usually when we're together, us talking over each other uh, happens all the time. So we can't really do that as much on Skype. We're trying to get better. <laughs> but we often talk together. These are Nautilus shells um, by an artist on Molokai in Hawaii. Um, and she fills them with acrylic. And I like them a lot. Which is why I bought them. So if you ever happen to go to Molokai, you could buy yourself some too. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. And I got a way to tie your earrings into my knitting. Okay, ready go for, for it. I'm ready. So the Nautilus show, it's based on a, it's a fractal relationship, right? Yeah. Well, one of the reasons that I like my Sashiko pattern is because it reminds me of le- of the fractals and tree branches. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. So one of the reasons I like that pattern. Yeah, it's really cool. I like it. I mean, I've seen the pattern, so... Yeah. I hope it comes out good. We'll see. I, ho- I think it will. Yeah. That's I am I kind of that. afraid of your blue yarn, though. You're afraid of my blue yarn? Yeah, the blue yarn for that. I'm hoping that it's not so light that it looks like 80s. Oh... Fingers crossed. Mm. Because uh, obviously I can't see the real color through my screen. Yeah, I like it. Even if it looks like the 80s. I was born then, you know, whatevs. And it's cool right now. Go for it, you know? Why not? Life's too short. And it's a light color. I'll over dye it if I get tired of it at some point. Yeah. So, Um, yeah. Is that anything else to hyperventilate over? Nope. That's Yeah, my life's pretty simple right now. How about books? Do you have anything you've read? No. Read, reading? We should wow. probably talk about this before the podcast and then go like, we're not going to do the books part because we neither of us have books. Language failed me. Uh, actually, no, I did read one. I finished oh, okay. reading... Uh, I, sorry, I left the screen to go look at it. I finished reading Northanger Abbey. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I started and finished. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, that was quick. Yeah. Are, Even did when you I, read all the annotations and all the text or were you like reviewing... Kind of. Um, mostly I was, well, because uh, some of his uh, annotations are just the same thing, like explaining that town means London, you know? So if it was something like that and I already knew what the definition was, I didn't bother because it was not a new right. a new thing to me. Um, but most of the annotations I did read because I love David Shepard. So um, I only wish the work was longer. And possibly a little bit better thought out. But it's her, like, first written work, so. Yeah, you're still figuring stuff out. Yeah, and some of the, you know, plot kind of, um, most of it's okay. And you can kind of see a lot of the structure from, um, of where she goes from there and building characters and sort of improving on some some things she kind of glossed over in this book. Uh, So if you get critical, you can think of that. But I really enjoy it, and I really enjoy Tilney. Tell us about who that is. Is that a character? 
Yeah, Mr. Tilney is the yes. hero slash love interest uh, in Northanger Abbey. Uh-huh. Um, and he's, like, educated and clever, and he's always trying to get the um, heroine to uh, examine her prejudice and, you know, think about things, like, that she normally doesn't really think about because right. she grew up in a neighborhood with, like, only one other family that she can socialize with, so she's very sheltered. Mm -hmm. Not particularly the kind of person I would pick as a partner, but he seems to like her a lot, so pretty cute, though. Yeah. And uh, he uh, hangs out with his sister a lot, which I think is really sweet. Oh, yeah. Did you ever watch Northanger Abbey or uh, any of that? No. I never, honestly... I know this is going to, like, remove all of my Jane Austen fangirl cred, but I yeah. can't remember, like, from one title to the next what story goes where, that's okay. except for Pride and Prejudice. Like, that's the only one. That's okay. Yeah. Well, we've long known that I'm a little bit crazier of a fan. Not, like, some people can get really crazy, but... But I don't go out and read other books that have nothing to do with Jane Austen. Like, the authors that are like, and this is what happens later. And I'm like, you have absolutely no idea of historical perspective. And I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, if they wrote them well, I would be. But you can't completely disregard the time in which these were written. Yeah. I mean, you may not like women being a little more subservient or any other sort of historical problematic thing for you, but that's like, if you're going to be writing in that time period, how can you just completely disregard it? I don't understand. Yeah. Some people love it anyway, because they really want more in the world of Jane Austen, and that's okay. But, right. but for me... But it's not for me. It's, it's just... It, it's... That kind of stuff is so not her writing. You know? Right. Her writing is so definitive to me. Right. And, like, when you read it, you know you're reading Jane Austen, or at least something in that time period, you know? Yeah. Even if you had no idea. Yeah. And I, I did read um, a good portion of The Mysteries of Udolpho, which uh -huh. is a book that's mentioned in it. Uh, you know, and it was written sli just slightly before she wrote this one. Uh-huh. Maybe, I think it was about ten years. I don't know. I'd have to look at the dates. But, uh, you know, it's like the writing... Is very much a period of the time. You know, when you read it, you you know you're not reading something modern. Right. Uh, and if I pick up any of the new books, that's not true. Yeah. So it's disappointing to me. Because I'm reading Jane Austen because I like it. I like this weird historicalness. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. So, but if you do happen to know of an author who's really good at writing historically uh, accurately... Uh, then, then let us know, because I'm oh, interested. Oh, please do. I'll try any reading, at least for a few pages. So, yeah, what else? A few pages. <laughs> trying to think if I have any other new books. Mm, no, that's all I can think about. Okay. Oh, wait, one more. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot because it's in my nook, but, um, yeah, I don't think you can see because of the glare. Oh, I rem saw you reading this. Yeah, you saw me reading, I think, the first one. Some of this I have on nook and some of this I have, uh, uh, in paperback. Yeah. So I'm going through those. I've kind of set them aside for the moment. This is, for those of you who are actually listening and not watching, uh, Patricia Briggs. And it's uh, the Mercy Thompson uh, series where she's a, not a werewolf, but like a were-coyote kind of. Anyway, it's total brain fluff. Uh, and I started reading it while I was going to Hawaii because I needed something that I could read in the airport without having to spend too much brain power on it. So that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. But a fun read if you need some brain fluff. Awesome. Do you have anything you're working on? No, not really. Okay. Oh, I don't have it with me. No, I did start reading something, now that I think <laughs> about it. Isn't it always funny how books are in our life and then I we know. totally don't 
think about well, it. Well, uh, here's why. I'll tell you. Okay, so I started reading... Oh, you remember when I bought that uh, Vogue knitting book? Right. I also got Bridges of Madison County. Uh, okay. And, um, I don't know, I've been... I think I saw, like, the first ten minutes of that movie or something, and it piqued my interest, and so then when oh. I saw the book, I was like, hey, sure, check it out. Oh, book made yeah. me cry. So Aww. sad. So, so sad. So, not not my kind of book. No. If you're crying, unless it's for happiness, that's no. different. So, um, and usually like, I'm not in for that kind of book. Uh-huh. And, um, I don't know, I just started reading it, and... I'm not, I don't think I finished it. I have a little bit more to get through, but I got through the sad part, so. Okay. Yeah. I would it, recommend it. I liked it. I, I mean, he writes so that you think the main character, his name is Robert Kincaid. You think he's real. Like, mm. he really did live at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently National Geographic gets inquiries about, like, where, because in the book, uh, Robert Kincaid works for National Geographic and he's a photographer, and so they get inquiries about, like, the issue that the Bridges of Madison County photographs are in, which is all made up, so. That's pretty cute. Yeah, and I looked it up because I didn't know. Right. But Google knows everything. Well, actually, hey. Google doesn't know everything, but Google knows a lot of things. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so that's what I read. Oh, you know what I just read uh, relatively recently was um, To Kill a Mockingbird, which, of course, I read as a younger person when they make you read it, but I didn't remember any of it, so I reread it. It's still sad. I don't yeah. recommend it. Well, only because I prefer happy books. Right. It's a good book. Just not sure why I needed to reread that. Yeah, I don't really remember much about that book either. I should reread it, but I think I probably had enough sad in books for a while, so. Yeah. I, might I would wait until you can handle a little bit of sadness in your book reading. Yeah. I do remember lot. that about that book. I yeah. Don't and, by the way, I don't remember uh, who Bridges of the Madison County is by. That's okay. Anything more for books? Mm, nope, that's it. Okay. Next. What do you got for Shiny? This is all you, madam. Oh, it is it? Show me. I your have so much. Okay. I can't so wait. So I ordered some interchangeable needles from Knit Picks. I have wanted an interchangeable set ever since I knew they existed, which was probably for at least 10 years. But yeah. I never got it because I could never justify spending that much money on needles yeah. when I could buy a pair of needles for like five or seven bucks. Right. That was a lot different than 50. But now I have a full-time job, and I'm steady and stable, and decided to get a pair, get a set. Yay! So, um... Hold it still, hold it still. Okay, hold well, I'm going to get it closer, so you can see. Hold it steady. It's very nice. So this is the Knit Picks Interchangeable Needles. The cast Is that green? Yes. Cat. This is Caspian colors. Green. Uh, it comes... Green. green for Slytherin? I already told you. I'm going to try and get into Slytherin, okay? I'm trying so hard to convert her. Sorry, guys. I know, and you know what's funny? Is that next turn, I'm probably going to do a newt, and I'm probably going to try and be in Slytherin. So after all this time of being in Ravenclaw, I'm probably going to end up giving my newt points to Slytherin. <laughs> anyway, uh, so if you have, uh, would like to say one way or the other, you can uh, give us the comments. Anyway, no, um, no, I'm going to talk over you. No, Slytherin. Anyway, these come in size 4 to size 11. They don't come in smaller sizes, I think, because the cable um, is too thick after you get too small, so you can't really do interchangeables on the smaller needle sizes. Uh, and then it comes with the needles, obviously, and then it also comes with two cables that, I have two cables out already, mm -hmm. uh, 16 inch and 24 inches, I think. Okay. 
And then it comes with these, which are like little caps for the yeah. Hold it needles. steady because you're kind of glitching out. Go it, slow because you're glitching. It These are the caps for the needles. Oh, okay. To turn them, uh, yeah. Bam. So, like, if you've got a project and you want to steal the tips, you can put these little holders on. Yay! And steal the tips off. So it comes with those. And then it came with this little doohickey. Well, that's very cute. And I was like, what is that for? And so I asked, it, you know, in Ravelry. Right. And what it is, is you uh, put it in, there's a little hole on the, um, on the needle edge so uh -huh. that you can hold it when you're attaching a needle tip. Oh, uh, so you don't twist them off when you're trying to twist. The tip so, on. yeah, so you can hold, it gives you just a little bit of leverage when you're... Right, because otherwise you could twist the cable part off. Yes. Or, you know, your cord. So then you twist I... it on, and then when you're trying, so then you can hold it, and then you can really get it tightened on. So. That's good. If anybody I... else is wondering what the hell that was for, like I was, that's what it's for. Mysterious pieces. No, no extra charge. Mysterious, this is serious business. Very mysterious. Um, so I've already used them a whole bunch, and I like it a lot. Are they, um, what, do you know what wood they're made out of? I want to say birch, okay. but I could be wrong. Some kind of, like, Enough. pressed wood or something? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, and then, so I ordered that in the, from Nitpicks, and then I also ordered my yarn. Wow. That's a lot of yarn. It is. So, my partner saw this in our bedroom, and she got really excited because she thought it was cotton candy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it was so sad. That, I mean, that I'm happy sad. it's yarn, but she was very sad it was not cotton candy. I love cotton candy, so I would feel sad, too. So Yeah, so, yeah, that was... Kind of silly. Okay. Is this um, the right color? Yeah. I have some more shiny. I didn't buy this since the last podcast, but I didn't talk about this on the last podcast. So I'll show it to you. No one's caring. Nobody's caring. Yay. This is... Hold her steady. Hold her steady. Oh, it's Project Japanese. Lace Yarn. It's from... A store called Daiso where everything is a dollar fifty and I couldn't resist. It's so pretty, it's such a pretty blue. So and I you wanna make me. Huh? And you didn't give it to me. No, I didn't give it to you. I wanna make snowflakes out of it. So I make give it I, I think they'd be really cute Christmas ornaments. And then Heather will get some. Yay! Uh, and then the other shiny that I have is actually shiny. Um, <clears throat> let's see if they'll show up here. Can yeah. You see, can you see they're them? A little, they're a little out of focus. I can't even tell if they're metal or wood, but hold steady. You're... All right, it's a little better. Hopefully. Great. So they're crochet hooks uh, in all kinds of sizes. All kinds of little sizes. I have um, larger size crochet hooks for crocheting like worsted weight stuff. I don't crochet that much, but I have them in case I need them. Or, or in you case just... I feel like crocheting again. You know, I'm sure I will at some point. So, I, but then I got this lace yarn for making snowflakes and I needed a small needle. So... Um, I went to a creative reuse place in my area, and mm -hmm. it's a place that has, like, stuff that usually people throw away, but artists are like, hey, I could use that. Right. And, uh, Familiar to that. So they have, like, tile and fabric, like, the fabric samples that they use at carpet stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What else did they have? They had, I mean, just like all kinds of stuff. Film canisters, uh, slides from uh, the university near me. 
Wait, I want to interrupt you okay. before I forget because I'm really worried about forgetting. Interrupt. So me. I just I just found out you can use um, stainless steel welding rod uh, <laughs> for blocking pins. Stainless steel welding rod for blocking pins. Nice. Are they cheaper than uh, blocking yes. pins? That's Good. what someone said. Because that's why I haven't bought them, because I don't think it's worth it when I can just use pins. Exactly. And anything that's cost prohibitive, I'm, like, not interested in right now. So, but Yeah, that... I mean, for a long time, I used beading wire that I already had for my blocking wire. It worked fine. And then I haven't really needed a wire since then, so. Well, then if you don't need it, but. Yeah. Anyway, so but that was my, cool. my tip of the moment. But make sure it's stainless steel, because they have... Obviously, things that rust when they're doing welding work. So, be sure you know what you're getting into before you get rust on your pretty shawl. Yeah, that would be not fun. Yeah, that would be bad. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, that's the kind of thing you would find at this creative reuse, reuse place. Right. I mean, there was, a bo- like, a whole bin of stamps. I didn't find any yarn. Mm. I think the other knitters found it before me. But I found all these crochet hooks were there, and I got them for... 50 cents a piece. That's crazy. I was like, and yeah, so I took them off and I'm like, how much do you want for your crochet hooks? And she's like, oh, like she had no idea what to charge me. Right. She's like, 50 cents a piece? I'm like, done. No taxi backsies <laughs> Yeah, no taxi backsies I'm just like, I want to run out of here before her supervisor heard that she just gave away a bunch of crochet well, hooks. I mean, plastic ones you can get pretty cheap. Yeah, but. So, um, and what else did I, was there? They had, like, a bulk, sh- a bulk section, mm-hmm. and, um, there was, like, this stringy, kind of loopy plastic in, like, bright colors, like, purple and black, and actually there was black, which isn't bright, but orange and black, and I don't know, it was just kind of, like, this weird, like, what, I don't even know what it was. Where it came from, or why somebody would want it. I don't know. It was just kind of fun, so. It's a mystery, Charlie Brown. Yeah. So, I'm really excited about my crochet hooks, and um, my plan is to make a snowflake as a project if I need a quick project. And I'm probably going to need that next month, Mm -hmm. uh, because I'll have started my owl, and... I'm going to be starting it a little late, and so I really just yeah. need to get cracking on it. Same here. Yeah. My owl is lagging behind. Yes. But that's so. one that, like, once you get started, I think you will can zoom along on, you know? Yeah, But you exactly. just got to get it going. It's just like, once I get past the, the narrow, boring parts, and I can get into the giant amounts of garter stitch that will kill me with boredom, then... I hopefully can get it done. But I I didn't... I was thinking about this, too, because I was planning to be able to do this on places like the bus, because it's garter stitch, you don't have to pay attention, right? Mm-hmm. I forgot. Uh, the main color is black. So that kind of limits me a little bit. be able to see it. Yeah, exactly. So I won't be able to do that, like, at night on the bus or driving around or wherever. So, I don't know. So, hopefully we can get, I can get it done. That's where I'm going with that. Because yeah. I plan to use my, you know, travel time to crank out a lot of it. So, we'll see. Any extra shiny things? Oh, that's it for me. I had a lot of fun with shiny this week. Yeah, that, that is a lot of fun. It was so especially, exciting when I got that package. What? Yeah. I said, especially the needles. Yes. Yeah. And... Very- I was coming home, and I was having, like, a whole hum day because I've been sick for, like, a month and a half, and every day is kind of a whole hum day. But I was coming home, and I was kind of whole hum, and I was like, maybe nitpick should be here by now. I wonder where it is. I got my email that it came in, and I come in, and, like, I don't see the package anywhere, and I'm like, oh, and my partner doesn't tell me that I got a package. And so I'm just like, ho hum, ho hum, and then I see it on the floor. She didn't tell me. She didn't tell me that I had a package from Knit Picks. It says Knit Picks. She knows it's yarn. She knows I'm going to be excited. She does not tell me. Well, she was waiting so you could savor it. I don't know. It's like 
dessert at the end of a boring meal. It makes you happier again. <laughs> She's agreeing with you. So okay. Anyway, I just I'm I'm just teasing, but okay. It was fun opening it up. And even though I know what's going to be inside, it's still fun to right. see what it is. It's, like, almost big enough. Yay! Because, you know, really... it looks, to me, it looks like a magical plant. Yeah, and that's kind of what you I was know? trying to trying to think about. It was, like, this looks like, you know, a plant. It's okay. It doesn't have to look like an alligator. I just wish that the, um scales would lay flatter. I don't like, I wouldn't like it as much if it was flat. I like, because they look like leaves to me. Yeah. So I like it. I'll take it. Done. I wonder if it'll fit your phone. You better measure your phone and then send me your dimensions, because your phone is like, wider but thinner. I'll stick, I'll make, um, I'll make it fit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was actually going to crochet a handle on it and try to give it to one of my, any of my friends that have a young, uh, girl. Oh, <laughs> how cute. Uh, well, you can do that you, too. Do you want any kind of finishing thing or you just want like Riji Saki thing going on up here? The, whatever you got up there is fine. Well, it's kind of ugly looking right now. She never cares. Do what you want. I care. I was nervous. <laughs> and that's how she broke her phone <laughs> when I threw it across the room because I hated the project. Lack of planning. Okay, so <laughs> we're done with shiny? Yep, we're done with shiny. Next. Brainy moments? Any Brainy for you this week? Uh, tips and tricks. Nope. If I had any tips and tricks, I'd know how to pick up the edge of that horrible garter stitch. But I don't. Well, it's in black, which is making it much more difficult. Yeah, I get my uh, my magnifying lamp out, <laughs> and that helps. Uh, and I it had would. it pinned. I had it pinned to my leg. Well, okay, to my pants. <laughs> Sounds less exciting that way, but um, just to keep it straight, because it's curling, too. Oh, oh, I bet it would. It's a corkscrew of misery. You'll make it. Yeah, I will. And like I said, I'll just start picking up stitches wherever I can feel like wanting to do them. Yes. So I'll make it work. And you know what you could do? You could what? pick them up and let the little tabby thing curl on purpose. And then it would be like a curly tab. I would... Okay, never mind. That's the face of no. Okay, moving on. Um, so, <laughs> I actually just started holding my yarn differently. Oh. Uh, I used to just hold it between two fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I pressed between here, and that's how I higher. got the tension. Higher, higher. I can't see. There you go. Okay. I just held it like that, and I then I squeezed between these two fingers to get the tension on my yarn. Right. I did this for, I mean, since I was eight years old, like, that's how right. I just, because this, like, looped these, like, f I just didn't, like, I was eight, and like, what the heck, I don't know what's going on with my hand. That, I don't know, that must work for people who have, like, really smooth hands that aren't moist. Um, yeah. Like, but us. my hands are moist. Yeah. We come pre-moistened. <laughs> we do. But, um... <laughs> So I recently just started wrapping it around my middle finger and giving it an extra twist, and then my finger goes here. Uh -huh. You can see that. Yeah, I can. So your so middle finger is pulling. Around my nice. middle finger. So I have an extra loop around my middle finger. Right. And uh, it's been working nicely. It just gives, like, a little bit extra tension so I don't have to squeeze my finger. Because I used to have to squeeze, like, really hard. Right. Here. Which is so, why I never tension my yarn that way. So now I can't, uh, so now I actually get a little bit more tension this way. So, um. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but, like, when I put my hand together, like, there's holes in it. <laughs> so yeah, I can't tension Yeah, and with yarn. me, like, it was, it worked out pretty well. Um, yeah. But, uh, anyway, um. That's pretty handy. I just decided to try it. Uh, you know, it was, it was something I needed a tighter tension on. I think with my hitchhiker, 
Oh. Uh, I think the yarn just kind of slipped through my fingers. So I started doing that, and then now I like it even when I'm not working on that. So Cool. Yeah. So I really had to the, hmm? Sorry. The, really, the brainy moment here is just try out new things for holding your yarn. You yeah. know, there's no right or wrong way to hold your yarn. For sure. And I had to modify the way I was holding my yarn because it tensioned perfectly. And I loved it. But it was giving me hand problems. And that's not good, because then I can't make anything. So I do a different way now. I wrap it around my pinky. Uh-huh. And then I use just my finger as, like, levering. Uh-huh. So if I need more tension, it goes back when I need less, you know. Or I'm making a You know, sometimes I wrap it twice, but... Usually, if I start wrapping things too many times around my hand, it um, just gets stuck. Yeah. Uh, because of my hands are moist. So, that works for me. It's working pretty good. Uh, it drove me really crazy at first because that was not how I was tensioning. And I don't even remember how I was doing it. I was like, I was holding it, holding it kind of like I was doing something like this. I my remember you doing that. I thought you were nuts for doing that. It's great tension. Perfect yeah. tension and perfect control and gives yeah, me Yeah, but, like, carpal yeah. tunnel, hello. Yeah, I know. That was really stupid. Yeah. Well, but, you, you know, know, it's just one of those things. It, it, I didn't even think about it. That's just kind of the way that um, I, I s- sort of accidentally fell into tensioning. Because uh, I didn't start that way. Yeah. Um, but then I, I must not have been getting good enough control. And then that's when I started yanking on things in this weird claw-like way. I can't even do it differently now. So that's good. So now I don't have hand problems from tensioning my yarn, which is great. Except maybe after a really long period, but that's normal. I do that, what you showed me with your first finger, I do it with my pinky of my right hand. Oh, uh, yeah. Where you're it holding actually holds, projects. like, where my, where my right hand needle goes, okay. it's where uh-huh. my pinky tells it to go. Yeah. Which is really bad, and I'm trying to get out of it, but it's just... You know. you know, what might actually help in a very weird way is wrapping a little bit of scotch tape around your fingers. Well, I just try and pretend like I'm having high tea when I'm knitting. Yeah, but that's, you know, you can't keep it out either. No, but it's just to, like, get it used to not Yeah. It really so takes, like, some brain power to get yourself to do something new. It's surprising. Yeah. Like, get just this new method of holding yarn took me, um more days than I'll care to think about. Well, but yeah, I need I needed to. I because my hands were in such pain, I couldn't manage anything else. Yeah, and you so, got to take well, care of your hands. I mean, yeah. especially like in this craft, you don't take care of your hands, you're not going to be able to do what you love anymore. Exactly. So, and my favorite thing too is um cuz our hands are like this a lot when we're crafting. So I'll take mm-hmm. a break and well, I'll Wait, wait, hold them in because uh, sometimes when we cut, when we edit, the edges get chopped. So hold them close to the center. There you go. So this is how my hands are a lot of the time when I'm knitting, you know. Yep. So then I'll take my hands and I'll just gently bring them back. So it's going the other way, you know, and it feels so nice. It feels nice right now. Yep. I do that sometimes with my thumb to make it go the other way. Yeah. Well, you're also, like, I can't do that. I love you. Yeah, I know. Hey, wait, <laughs> caution. Caution, spoiler. Uh, that it, gross moment ahead. I'm going to put my thumb behind it my hand. It gross, but I can't do that. It, it freaks people out. My kids think it's funny when I, like, do the things that they're doing. Mm-hmm. The kids that I teach. Yeah. They're, like, they're bored, like, somewhere, and I'm like, I can do it, too. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Tangential sisters, here we are. Yeah. We tangent a lot. <laughs> this is probably the farthest we've gone on this podcast, tangentially, but yes, we can do this. I used to be able to do both hands at once, but I can't anymore. And then I can also bend my finger like <laughs> Oh, that's a lot. This one only a little bit. Oh, dear. So, next segment. <laughs> <laughs> next segment. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Nature. I haven't been outside. I've been sick and sleeping. Not even a single bird or anything? You don't hear anything? 
Okay, that counts. Oh, so I was at uh, one of the schools. Oh, we had a mariachi music training, which was hmm. super cool. Uh, with cool. Jose Hernandez, who is of uh, Mariachi Sol de Mexico. Uh-huh. He's really good. And uh, came and trained us for like two days in mariachi music. So That's anyway, cool. I was at another school. And uh, they have a natural garden in okay. front of their school. And it's like not that big, but it's... Uh, and there's flowers that are, there's a couple of bushes that are, like, really happy right there, and they're making these cute little flowers. And there was this hummingbird who was like, ooh, little flowers? Little, little, little flowers? And then he flew off. I like how you make them sound cute, even though they're, like, the world's most vicious animal, and they go for the jugular. They're so cute. They're, they're cute to get away with their viciousness. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw a bird, but I don't know what it is on my uh, on my patio. He had a little mohawk. Oh, maybe uh, he was maybe little. A Phoebe? He was he was little. I don't think he was a Phoebe. He might have been a Phoebe, but because the last time I saw a Phoebe was during mating season, so I might just not know what they look like right now. Because they're small and they have a little kind of well. There's a couple of kinds we have around, but yeah, yeah. they have kind of a little going on. It was really cute. When they're looking at something and they're all interested. Yeah, and our cats, of course, were looking outside like, what's that? Delicious? Delicious morsel. That's what that is. Yeah. What about you? Um, I haven't seen anything, but every day when I'm in the house I keep hearing this zoom, zoom. Because there's a, we have a bush with uh, the vibrant sort of purple flowers outside that the hummingbirds like. So somebody keeps doing a flyby on our house, but I can't catch them. Like, he he does it for a while. I'm assuming it's a he. Um, but who knows. But yeah, I keep hearing him. And then I heard the fir- first mockingbird I've heard in a while. Because they, they all calm down uh, when they're not, you know, into the whole matey matey thing. Sounding like Carl. Find a partner. Yeah, so I heard one the other day, and I'm like, uh, it's a little early for making your car alarm noises, but go for it. More power to you. And I do love uh, mockingbirds, since they're one of the few birds that'll, like, sing at night, other than, you know, like, a screech owl, which you don't want singing in the middle of the night. No, thank you. If you've ever heard one, they're horrible. They're they're uh, not up there on the list of animals with beautiful songs. So I'll take a mockingbird that's imitating car alarms any day. There you go. I, I remember when they used to not sound like car alarms from a long time ago. Back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> Back before there were car alarms. Right. But that's all I've heard of. And I've heard them both. I haven't seen them. So I don't know if that counts or not. It counts. Okay. Even though it's I spy. I just totally want to know what that hummingbird is. Like, he's... he's. You need to get one of those, like, pet cams. All right. But put it outside. Be a hummingbird cam. Every time I try to peek out the blinds to mm-hmm. see him, not a, not a thing. Suddenly he's gone. I think I make too much noise, maybe. Oh, my God. Or something. <laughs> Probably cues him. Cues them in, yeah. Who knows? But. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. You've got music for the moment? I don't. I've been, well, a little bit. I've been listening to Nina Simone. Uh huh. Who's that? Um. I don't know what you would call her musical style, but I'll link to her. Okay. Um. I've been enjoying that. Do you have anything you're you've been listening to? Uh, I have something that I found uh, because I was teaching this lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was teaching a kindergarten lesson. I found a book called Rap a Tap Tap, and it's about a tap dancer whose name is Bill Robinson. He went by Bojangles, so I like right. to call him Mister Bojangles because that's a way better name than Bill Robinson. Uh, and he was 
considered by many to be the best tap dancer ever. Like, right. There hasn't been anybody better than him. Which is why his name is so famous. Yes. Uh, and on YouTube, there's a video of him in a movie called Stormy Weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this New Orleans minstrel band that's playing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the tune is, but it's really catchy, and I really liked it. And I found after listening to it, after watching the video for six times on Friday, I couldn't get the song out of my head. So, So no, of course, I don't remember what it was, but we'll link to it in our show notes. Yep. Which are, as always, at sistersoftheholyfiber.wordpress.com. And WordPress. WordPress. Yes. They're at WordPress. <laughs> it's probably going to become a thing. I just WordPress. can't remember. WordPress. I type it in as WordPress, and then I try to say anything else. I'm not even going to repeat it. I'm not even I, sure that I said the right thing earlier, so I hope I did. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. So, uh, this is Devin, a.k.a. Rambunctious Guy. Thanks for Thanks. watching. And this is Heather, a.k.a. Tiny Kiwi. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>